All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel here. Um, I'll hit it right away. Like and subscribe if you like to see, if you like to see this kind of stuff. Um, I also do firewood and we also do uh, dirt work. So today we're going to change oil on the ASV RT60. Right there. Greatest machine in the world right here. Anyway, I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how I do it. I always take off this bottom grate here. I'm going to tip this sideways. This down here, the skid plate, I always unbolt that. Take it right off there because it's always full of stuff, full of uh, debris up in there. So get my creeper and I grab my handy dandy impact. And you come under here and take her apart. Pull it out, and really, it's pretty clean. Just that right there. That's all it's on it. I like to clean that, push that out of the way, and then I usually grab my little scraper here. Point you guys down there so you can see something. There you go. I usually grab my scraper and clean this off. not that hard to take on and off so I just take it off and I'm able to clean it that way and otherwise you got this little hole right here this little hole and you can do it that way too, but I just don't like to do it that way so all right I'll go under there and grab the drain plug and we'll drain the oil out One thing about these ASVs, if you don't open up the cap on top, see how it's gurgling right now? If I grab this cap, the fill cap, and open that up, watch it flow now. There you go. It's crazy, it builds that much pressure. See, I took the cap off the top, the fill cap, and now it flows. I don't know, every ASV, I've had a few of them now, and they all do that. My brother's a mechanic and he said, that is the weirdest thing ever, how it holds pressure like that, but. It does. Uh, the, the crankcase drain or something. Breather. It must be a breather of some sort. It says that must be plugged, but I'm telling you, every ASV I've had has done it. So it ain't that. Let me know in the comments if your guys' ASVs do the same thing. I don't know. It's weird. This is a 19. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, RT60. Um, with the Perkins motor in it. Alright, now we got the oil drained out. I did go empty my... I did go empty it. We got a 55 gallon drum by dumping in. Um, and then up here... And you can reach it from the bottom too, but it's easier to reach the oil filter from the top. So, I'll go ahead and get my filter wrench on there and we'll go ahead and take that off and and uh, replace that with a new one all right guys i got that filter off there filters off probably can't see nothing done in that dark hole but here's what i always do on my filters too i write dates on them now you know the date date and hours 799 hours on this thing so uh yeah i always write that on there so i know i usually write it down in a book too but i write it on the machine too it's nice just on the oil filter usually because i usually do oil filter and and uh, feel for it though at the same time. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this thing back on there. And uh, yeah, we'll get some oil back in it. And I'll show you what else I do too here next. All right, I got that put on there. Look at how nice that worked out. If you can see it down in there, the date and the hours actually is up. That was just a guess spun around there and that's what we got. All right, now to put oil in this thing. So you see, the fill cap's way down underneath there. See where that fill cap is? Way down there. You gotta take off the... Right about in there. You gotta take off the air cleaner. It's really simple to take off. Half inch ratchet. 
half inch, half inch, half inch, wrench, ratchet, pull this thing right off. This is just spring loaded. You can go ahead and push that squeezy two together, unscrew the nut. And I don't have an air filter, I'll just blow this one out this time. Usually I swap them out every time, both inner and outer. Because actually, you guys know, never seen it in a video, but um, <laughs> my old machine, my old ASV, the RC60, now that guy there, I had that cap loose there from when I was draining oil out of it. I'll tighten that cap back down and I'm gonna wipe around it. Um, the old RC, let me find a rig here. And the old RC60, believe it or not, actually the old RC60 I had, one day it started blowing, blowing black smoke like crazy. And I was like, holy man, what's wrong with this thing? Like it had no power, blowing black smoke. And it got get, getting worse and worse and Pretty soon, I mean, eventually I was like, all right, forget it. I'm just gonna take this thing and I, I gotta take it to the shop and look at it. We loaded it on the trailer, took it off the job, took it home, and I thought the turbo was off or something. I'm like, my God, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It has no power and it's blowing black smoke. And so I called the dealer and they said, well, did you change out the filters, the, the oil filter, or not oil filter, the air filter? I said, yeah. Well, did you change the inner one? And I said, no, I never changed the inner one. <laughs> I always change the outer filter. I never change the inner filter. Well, guess what? I changed the inner filter. I bought both on it because it's a cheap fix. I mean, how much is an inner filter? I don't even know, but ain't much. 20, 30 bucks. I don't know. Whatever it is. Could be 10 bucks. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So I replaced both filters, inner and outer. Ran like a champ. Ran like brand new. I was like, are you kidding me? Here, I thought the freaking, I mean, the thing had 3,000 hours on it. You know, and that's, you may not think that's a lot, but I don't know. In the ASV world, I think that's a lot. I don't know why, but I do. I mean, I got rid of my my other 60 at, yeah, that 3,030. Well, it was a summer it did that, 3,500 hours. I, uh, I got rid of it, and I bought this one. I bought this one with just a couple hundred hours on it. Hundred hours on it, maybe. I don't, I don't remember what, how many hours were on. It wasn't very many. I think it was like brand new. A horse farmer had this one. I don't even know what you guys can see right now. Probably nothing. Better make sure I got everything on down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, a horse farmer had this, and when I bought it, they didn't do any maintenance to it. They didn't use it except for moving hay either. That's all they did with it. But they didn't. I don't think they opened this hood. Good thing they only had it for a hundred hours. I don't think they ever changed oil on it. I don't think they ever greased it. Granted, it didn't do dirt work, not like I do. But, uh, yeah. Got some oil in this thing. But yeah, it's been a good skid steer, though. Like I said, I, I had a new one ordered. Um, Actually, I ordered a new one. You need to wait. You gotta wait so long to get a new one now. I ordered the. I ordered the new. I didn't really order it. I told the dealer that I wanted one. Call me when you got one available. So don't get me wrong when I said I ordered one and then I backed out. Because this is where this story's going. The story's going is that I. That I. Uh, he called me and said, "Hey, I got one coming. Let me know if you want it. If not, I'll send the next guy. I got a bunch of guys waiting. So it wasn't a big deal." But he, I said, well, yeah, I guess send, let me know what the price is on it. You know, what, what it would be. Um, sent me the invoice on it, or the estimate on it. $82,000. And I'm like, holy moly. Um, and I only had, I only got, you know, 800 on this one now. And usually I shoot for 1,000. Um, the excavator over there has got 600 on it. So I usually shoot for 1,000. If I can, if I can do 1,000 hours, I don't remember what this takes. So it's one or two, but... I'll sh shoot for a thousand hours, so I didn't quite have a thousand on this one. I got 200 hours yet, so I got a season left on this, and we'll see from there. We'll see how broke I am, if I can buy a new one or not. <laughs> but 82,000, I was like, holy crap, you guys nuts? Yeah, we're not even there yet. I'm pretty sure it's two, I'm pretty sure it's two gallons right on the money. 
if I remember right. But uh, yeah, 82 grand for a new ASV. Now that's the Max series. Um, it's a whole different setup than this guy. Not whole different, but different. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I ended up not doing it. I ended up backing out and. I mean, I didn't put any money down. I didn't, like I said, I didn't really order it. I told him I wanted one. Let me know when he got one available. So it was just one coming to the lot and and then I backed out, so. All right, we'll go ahead and fill this thing up. Check oil on it and then uh, I'll show you when I fill the filter or when I take off that oil filter. You guys probably should be able to sit right there and watch. Not that you want to. Rut roll. It might be more than two. God, I thought it was like 1.9 gallons. Now, yeah, wait for it to drain down through the motor here too. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a little splash more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and top this thing off, guys. See you in a few minutes. All right, go ahead and take this oil filter, this fuel filter off. I got the. Oil all filled up on it. It ended up being about two and a half. Two and a half gallons. Anyway, so this, you just pull this nut off. It's a 7 16 Pull this nut off. I only do this once a year, so I forget. But I'm pretty sure that just goes up there. I don't know how much stuff comes out of this. There, now that nut. Did I do that right now? Oh, yeah. I don't think much fill, much fuel comes out of it. Oh, it's going in my pan. Just a little splish splash. And you fit that new O-ring in there. Or that new seal all the way around there. Just slides right in there. Kind of some debris in here. There we go. Now grab the new filter. And looks like something like such. If you got garbage off the bottom of it. And it just sits in there like that. Never use. Sometimes it's worse to use that stuff. All right, so that's there. Unless you're changing out the oil filter, or the fuel filter, then there's oil filter. And I don't know that you'd have to change that every time. I mean, I know in like a trucks you don't. Well, I guess a dump truck I do, but. All right, let's go ahead and spin this filter on there. Made to the ground at least. That's always a positive thing. Then there's a prime ball right here. You can go ahead and. Whoa! That's not good. Go ahead and prime her up. Alright, so here's what I did. I put this so that I think they'll ring. I think both seals are the same top and bottom What I did when I stuck that I stuck it on the filter the top one there I stuck it on the filter and what happened when I stuck it up in there. It was rolled a little bit And it didn't seal correctly because now I can prime it Stay here and prime it. It's just a primer ball like off a boat um, And you can sit here and prime it and hear it flow all the way through it. So yeah, all right We're good there All right, now I just put this guy here on the jack Jack it up in there. You gotta, you gotta go past it and come back by the receiver hitch. I think. Something like that. That way there you can pretty much stick this in right in place. Just like that. And then go ahead and put it all on. And screw it on. So that's how I do that. Alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.